Thanks for tuning in to the Old Dirty Basement. On today's show, we're covering Ed Gein. Yes, uh, I actually enjoyed this one. I mean, not in that kind of way. That would be kind of gross. But uh, it was it an was, uh, interesting, interesting story. I don't know. I, I, I thought this guy had mommy issues, but we'll see. Yeah, well, we hope you guys enjoy it. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and leave us that five-star rating on Google, Apple, Spotify, however you're listening. And sit back, relax, and enjoy Ed Gein. The Plainfield Ghoul. Warning. The following podcast of Old Dirty Basement may be disturbing to some of our listening audience. Discretion is highly advised. Graphic language and descriptions of heinous acts throughout. This episode is as dark as my voice is deep. This is the old dirty basement, home to debauchery, madness, murder, and mayhem, a terror-filled train ride deep into the depths of the devil's den, with a little bit of humor and history. I'm your announcer, Shallow Throat. Your hosts are Dave and Matt. I love you, Kate Beckinsale. Call me sometime. Hey, this is Matt. And this is Dave. And welcome to the old dirty basement. Where every week we cover a true crime. Or a compelling story. So sit back. Relax. And comprehend. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome back all you cellar dwellers. We got another round at the basement. I'd like to say hi to Dave. What's going on, Dave? What's going on, Matt? Uh, nothing much. We got a special guest in here today, huh? Yeah, special guest, Zap. What's going on? Hey, Valens, how's it going? Good, man, good. Yeah, Zap's down here for a very gruesome episode. Yes, so this this one is not is not fun for the whole family. This is a rated R. Right, so I played that uh, disclaimer warning by Shallow Throat at the beginning of this. So Zap had a cool story, if you listen to Nightmare on Elm Street, about Ed Gein. And uh, you want to touch on that again real quick? Yeah, Ed Gein was, uh, th- that guy was something special, all right. I mean, th- th- this guy that ended up uh, inspiring so many, so many <laughs> Such incredible, an inspiration. incredible horror movies based on his actions. That that guy was something special, all right. Well, I mean, if it wasn't for Ed Gein, then we wouldn't have some of these tasty treats mm-hmm. as a, as movies that we grew up with. I mean, he inspired four of the big ones that we'll get into. Mm-hmm. Some of the stuff he did, and imagine back in the fifties. I mean, oh, he, hearing hearing about the horrors uh, that the horror house of Ed Gein. I think now we're so desensitized to violence; like it would be shocking. But imagine 1950s America, hearing about these things. I couldn't imagine. Yeah, so for sure, that was small town madness. This is the stuff that is going to shock a community, and did, in fact, shock a community you know, to its very core. Mm-hmm. You hear stuff like that nowadays probably every other day. Right. Yeah, it's in the news for a minute, and then you're talking about something else five minutes later. As Dave had mentioned, desensitization. Yep. Desensitized. It's just like not that, you know. And with movies and stuff and cinema and, I mean... He inspired a lot of this stuff that you see it in movies. And sometimes I don't think you can tell the difference between reality. Not, not that you can't tell, but some people are like, oh, what's real? What's not? And if you see it in a movie, oh, it's possible. Well, a lot of listeners might not know that he inspired so many movies based on his true acts, like the heinous acts of one man inspired mm-hmm. so many. So you guys got anything else before we get into it? No, I'm, I'm ready to get uh, get rolling. You good? How about you, Zap? I mean, there's so much. I know that's what we're going to get into. That's yeah, so that's cool like about before it. we get into it. I mean, we're going like to get into it. We're going to get into it. Chomping at the bit. Ton, ton. ton. This guy, did. yep, just ton. Let's cool. enjoy it like a like a tasty beverage. Yep. This is the story of Ed Gein. The heinous acts of one man would be responsible for the birth of many of the most famous villainous killers in the history of cinema. Not long ago, a monster named Ed Gein would be responsible for unimaginable brutality towards the dead and the living. This is his story. You know what, Matt? What's up, man? Before you go any further, how about a little foreplay? (laughs) Okay. Hey, not that kind of foreplay, but here are four hints to give you a taste of what's to come. Psycho. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Silence of the Lambs. American Psycho. And now time for some history. 
Edward Theodore Gein was born August 27, 1906 in La Crosse County, Wisconsin. He was the second child to George and Augusta Gein. Ed had an older brother named Henry, born in 1901. His father was described as timid and an alcoholic. His mother was a devout Christian who was overbearing. His mother despised his father, and she believed drinking was a sin, and due to his drinking, he was not able to hold a job. She stayed with him as she did not believe in divorce. She had moved the family from La Crosse to Plainfield to escape what she thought was a sinkhole of filth in Plainfield. They lived on an isolated farm. So Plainfield, the name of the place, Plainfield, is just how it sounds. Just a plain, I mean, there's nothing there. If you look at it. Well, he was uh, called the butcher of Plainfield. He was the butcher of Plainfield. Mm -hmm. That's where the crimes were committed. But the mother had moved them from La Crosse, which in her mind. Oh, I thought that was a sport that he played. (laughs) His mother mother moved him from La Crosse to soccer. He became an avid soccer player. Plainfield was like a um, a more rural area, I guess. They had like a little town, but she thought La Crosse was like a metropolis almost. Like with with just like... uh, you know, sin and, and, and just all kinds of bad stuff going on in it. So you know much about that area there, Zach? No, I know nothing. Well, all I know is allegedly they play lacrosse on a plain field. <laughs> in, in, yeah, it's a good connection. In a county in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Ed Gein would be the lacrosse type. He doesn't have the look, you know, but I guess you never know. He looks like he would play um like darts. Yeah, I could see his like lacrosse that. stick with like a skull on <laughs> the end. <laughs> you know what I mean? Stuff like that. I, I could definitely picture it, but I don't know if he was doing that, but... I know this mother was overbearing, like it said. Like many serial killers that we talk about, his father was an alcoholic, Mm -hmm. mother overbearing. I mean, he had only one brother. Mm -hmm. But uh, once you start out with the alcoholic fathers, it it seems to be a uh, Doesn't lead to anything good. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't ever lead to anything good. So it's interesting with, you know, good old Eddie's mom. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a woman who would basically be the person to, you know, pot calling the kettle black. Right. So this is a woman who ingrained in her kids' minds, all other women are whores. Right. They are the devil. Mm -hmm. Like that. That's the devil. That's the devil. Like Bobby Boucher. That foosball is the devil. (laughs) Just like apparently lacrosse was the devil. Right. Uh, uh, Yeah. So it's, as we will soon discover here, Mm -hmm. this woman just, in their minds, look, kids, stay the hell away from every other woman in the world. Right. They're all sinners. Mm -hmm. They're all whores. They're just terrible. They're going to rob you of everything and take you right down to Satan's hotel. Yeah, but... uh, (laughs) No, but, I mean, she was definitely a nut job. Well, no, but, I mean, the husband, he couldn't hold a job. Mm -hmm. She's there working hard, got the kids running around, making dinners, doing laundry. Yeah, I feel, and, I feel bad for the lady. And from you know, a little bit of research I did on, like, outside of what we have written here, I did some more research than that, obviously. But she only pretty much had sex with that guy. I think the two times that, you know, from what they were saying, they can't prove that. Yeah, where's she was the, the proof type on that, this that, that was only, like, sex to procreate and all that. Was so it like Mormon no, or something? Yeah, I mean, I mean, she was very religious. Like, you're only doing that. She was only doing that to have the kids. That was it. So no wonder the guy was an alcoholic. You know what I mean? So he took, like, two shots, two kids. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's kind of what they were saying. Nobody knows for sure, but I don't know. I didn't read that. Yeah. Did you read that tap? I didn't see that part. I did not read that, but that <laughs> makes not, sense. I did not read that so either. So as a, it's a... I think he was tapping ass. Just, I just think they're lying about that. Nah, well, as a comparison, so it is possible, you know, if let's pretend that Matt, you have a sibling, one could argue that your parents had intercourse twice. 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 That we it. know of. Yes. That we know of. So that was just kind of people thinking, saying that she was so devout that sex was only used for procreation. That woman was a saint. So she wasn't using sex as like enjoyment yeah. or anything. It was like, like we're procreating, that's it. You get your nut you get all, it, yeah. and, and we're done. You know what I mean? Maybe they had to try over a couple of months, but that was it. So Jump in, I'll love you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very Catholic of them. What, what was their religion? I'm not sure. I mean, they were Christians, but... Yeah, okay, you know that's not I mean? Catholic. So just to recap. So Jesus, where we, I know, man. Right, <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? Uh, what? But it's very Catholic of them. Yeah. What, just only have the... Only do the do to make the babies. Look, I'm uh, just saying... Well, okay. Is that... Okay. Is that <laughs> is that just Catholic? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's any Christian. Is it? Uh, like a Christian? I don't know. I mean, I don't know for sure, but I would assume... There's is other, it limited to Christianity? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, that's something we that could be a next. That could be a whole other podcast. Yeah, I mean, we could definitely get into it with that. But yeah, right, I take next the comment podcast, back. Ne- yeah. Next definitely. podcast, the stereotyping yeah. of Catholicism and only having intercourse <laughs> only having to make children. <laughs> yeah, that's what we learned. So to recap, what Gosh. we kind of just read. So they were born and raised in 
lacrosse, I guess we're saying, and it moved the playing field mm -hmm. to a more rural area. And he, she was probably trying to separate her kids from any kind of influence, outside influence, and maybe kind of trying to keep them away from everything. Yeah, so. she just thought uh, playing field was just filthy. Right. Which I, I don't know. I've never been there. No, me neither. Ed and his brother, Henry, would only leave the house for school. They were not allowed to have any friends. His mother described all women, other than herself, as pure evil. Horse. As, as Ab said, yeah. Horse. Yes. yes. What, what are they even, ah, these women. Ed was socially awkward and the target of bullying because of his odd behavior and lack of social interaction. People that remembered Ed from his school days said he would laugh at odd, inappropriate times and that he had a speech impediment. Yeah, so the kid probably got bullied a lot in school. You know, oh, I sounds would like most kids growing up. Yeah, I mean, but you would assume. And I know they said he had like a droopy eye. He had mm. some kind of like a growth on his one eyelid and it caused his one eye. Actually, maybe we'll get into that later. Zap had a little tidbit with the hat. Mm. So Zap wanted was to get that, into maybe that. Maybe it balanced out the droopy eye. Look, last I heard, I thought that uh, eye afflictions on young men were a result of masturbation. And so <laughs> that's what so he was blind said. in one eye. <laughs> this, yeah. this explains so much. Yeah. That's I don't think I, he was allowed to masturbate, which could explain a lot also. Well, no. Uh -huh. That's going to lead me into one of the facts that I found digging deep. Mm. I don't know if this is 100% for sure. He but was I, the first to come up with the flashlight. Yes. No. He, flashlight. Get it? Come on, yeah, guys. Maybe. It, it could no, be. Nothing. could be. I don't understand a word you just said. Now, I don't know if Ed Gein said this happened like when he was in therapy after. We don't want to jump ahead. But when he was 12 years old, his mother called him masturbating in the bathtub. And she came in and dumped hot water on him. And basically was like, you know, that's kids got to learn, work. though. Yeah, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Jeez. So but she did say that was if you're going to do anything, do that before you like actually have sex with a woman. But he was only 12 at the time. She, she came in the bathroom when he's in there. Well, yeah, that's that's like his private time, though. Right. I, I'd, I'd be a little. Would you imagine like one of the first times you're doing that and your mom comes in, dumps hot water on you? It's got to fuck you up. I thought that was normal. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that was every household. Maybe it would get you there. I don't know. I mean, well, it depends on who you are. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Was the purpose of the hot water punishment <laughs> or <laughs> Like an arousal, yeah, to get you there. <laughs> Come I don't on, know. Mom. I Come mean, on. You got, is that the hottest you can get? It could have been. But that's one of the two things that happened in childhood that they were kind of saying maybe could have scarred him or sent him in a certain direction with things that happened later. But who knows? I think those things are imprinted. Like, I don't, I don't think that's, I don't know. Everything's a learned behavior though. Well, the other thing we're going to get into, I don't want to bring it up right now, but there was another thing that, that happened early in his life that I think definitely molded what he would become, but we'll get into it later. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll get into that. Later. There's a lot. Zap even has a picture he brought along of him. We'll it's a great picture you. though. Yeah, well, that yeah, was in Zap's living room. That, cousin? <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> a really good picture. His mother read to the boys each afternoon from the old Testament about murder, death and retribution. Ed Gein did well in school, but was punished by his mother if he tried to make friends. I don't understand the friend thing. Yeah, I don't know that either. Oh, there he is. Zap got the picture. Yeah, out. there he is. Ed. <laughs> this is kind of creepy that way. But I see creepy what you're saying, yeah. you saying about the yeah, hat. Let's move that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put that up while we're doing the podcast. <laughs> he kind of looks like everybody's like great grandfather when yeah. you see picture. Yeah, he does kind of look like that guy. <laughs> it's that guy. No, nah, he looks like, uh, I'm trying to think what he looks like. Sweet Eddie G. Yeah. What was his nickname? I mean, this guy looks like the guy that changes your oil. You know what I mean? When you go to like, I don't know, that type With of guy. With the Texaco like a, station? Like, I hear, hear they call him Sweet Dick Eddie. Is that what they say? Yeah. <laughs> is that his nickname? Yeah. Look at his mom called him. <laughs> but now we're looking at the in picture. The bathtub. Now this is a late picture of Ed from probably when he first got caught. So Zap made a good point. So Zap, tell us what you were saying about his look. So you may or one may or may not, you know, depending on where you go, you may see some fly young guys walking around instead of their, their baseball caps straight or reversed, completely reversed. This guy's got the little, the tilt, the side fly yeah, or the side sly as it were. A little tilty. Yeah. So not only was this guy turned in real life, but he, had, he wore his <laughs> baseball caps cockeyed. I can see that. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I never caught that, but now you're saying that, Zap. I see. I think he started that whole trend, maybe with his hat. I, to the th side. This man was indeed a trendsetter. Was that yeah. like a Kangol? <laughs> well, that's, I don't that's know. That's a high end cap, though. It, it it is, but I always thought he had like an Elmer Fudd look. Timberland. Like I could see yeah, that. It is an Elmer Fudd. Yeah, sure, exactly. Yeah, totally oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gun or but I think that was a Wisconsin look. Like yeah, when we grew yeah, up, yeah. there was like a certain look that, that people plaid. from the East Shore. Now this is a black and white, and I'm assuming black and red plaid. Yes. maybe that that look. A hunting cap. Yes. Mm. Might have had some bright orange in there, too. Right. But Zap has a For good, safety. 
Yeah. Yes, the bright orange. That was a good thing to point out with the hat sideways. So we'll put that picture online so you guys can check it out. For sure. So uh, where were we at here? In the we story? were saying like his, his mother read the Old Testament about mm-hmm. murder and death and retribution to the kids pretty much every night. Right. Um, and uh, they were punished if they tried to make friends. Maybe the mom didn't want them to separate from her. Maybe she didn't want kids in the house. It just seemed like a controlled thing, you know, I would think. But I know the older son at some point revolted a little bit towards that. Yeah, he we'll thought mom and dad were yeah. weird. Yeah, but Ed loved his mom, and the uh, the dad, like like you said, was an alcoholic. I don't know how much he was really involved. I did read something that uh, he he owned a store, the dad, and uh, he was such a fuck-up, I guess, with being an alcoholic. Was dad. it a haberdashery? Mm. It might have been. Okay. But I think it was more like a, just a regular grocery store or something like that, and uh, he was screwing up so bad that the mother actually had to take it over and run it, and that was like kind of back then kind of taboo a woman running a business it was more Mm. like a man you know what i mean Mm -hmm, that type mm -hmm. stuff but uh, he was such a screw up that she had that's why he wasn't able to hold a job right because he'd just like get mad and go home and drink can you blame him no no no, that's what i'm saying look at ed i was like if this is my son what else you want me to do yeah right i mean absolutely that's what that's what my dad used to say to me is like now he's like you see why i drink i didn't know what he meant (laughs) and now you know i know yeah as you get older that woman was a saint (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> He's right. Your mother was a saint. Your mother uh, remains a saint, Matt. Mm-hmm. I think all our mothers are saints. Yeah. Absolutely. They do. They like my mom floats like when she goes like into the house. <laughs> I was like, Mom, are you walking? <laughs> yeah. How'd you do that? She just goes like this. <laughs> this kind of floats around. Uh back to the story. Not much is known about his life between school and adulthood. Ed's father would die in nineteen forty, but had no real impact on his life. However, his father did possibly teach him how to tan animals and skins which comes up later in the story. His mother had a greater impact on Ed's life. Unlike his brother, Henry, who at times stood up against their mother, Ed adored her and embraced her view on the outside world. So the other thing I wanted to bring up, the story goes that uh, the mother and father were in the slaughterhouse. I had a pig hanging up and they were gutting it, like slicing it down the middle. Ed walked in, kind of snuck in and was watching and orgasm when she was (laughs) slicing the, yeah, had an or his first orgasm when she was gutting the pig. What, like, where on the black web are you looking for some of these facts? Because well, this was on nothing. I, well, I'll, <laughs> that I've to, read. I'll, I'll show you. I mean, I think this guy got captured. I, we don't want to ruin the story. But yeah, yeah. At some point, he got evaluated, and all these stories came out. Now, whether or not he was lying about these things, but that's kind of a, I mean, usually what, psychotic. What would be the benefit murders. in making that yeah. story? I don't know, but basically sets in the, what do you call it, uh, motion like what will happen in his few, you know what I mean? But we'll get in all that later. I don't want to, you know, call bullshit. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, so on one hand, you know, given the depravity mm-hmm. of this dude, I'll say that's entirely possible. Mm-hmm. Absolutely entirely possible. Right. However, I agree. I agree. If they asked him and he gave them that story, I'll cry bullshit. Right. Only because, okay, can anyone, not just used tos, but anyone remember the first time they ejaculated? I mean, really? Yeah. No, the answer is absolutely not. Yeah. What did you do? Write it down? No. Yeah, you're right. But if he was looking at something like a pig slaughter and got aroused by that, I think you would. That would be something that would strike a memory yeah. cord. Yeah, maybe. But not to the oh, first yeah, time. Right? All right, all right. I guess I am discounting the. Uh, if you've never seen that before, like yeah. I think, like if I saw like a pig get cut and opened up and guts being spilled out. It's, yeah, if it was something weird that one associate with sexuality. Yeah. And now, to jump ahead, the guy died a virgin, according to him. So, that's something that he said. So, that did? Yeah. But to know that's what turns you on, or maybe does it for you. But the thing is, it contradicts kind of that is what we'll find out later, stuff that he said. I don't know. I know that's something that came up. I did find it on a couple places online. Okay. And it's supposedly a story that was recounted by him, or you know what I mean? I would imagine. It had to come from him. Who else would know? His well, parents are gone, you know what I mean? But So with that, maybe his parents saw it happen. Yeah. And maybe, you know, his old man was telling his buddies at the bar. Right. But, I mean, Eddie wasn't wired right. No. And maybe in your immature mind at that time, if that's something that reached into the, like, realms of the and you weirdest part of your brain, mm-hmm. yeah, and he associated that with something that turned him on, right. could be. Right. I mean, we're all not, I mean, I hope not serial killers sitting at the table here. No. But... I mean, I Could don't know. Could have been something that, yeah. <laughs> you never know. I mean, but. You never know. <laughs> yeah, right. After their father's death, Ed and his brother took odd jobs. Like our friend Shallow Throat, they did a lot of handyman work. Ed would also babysit for neighbors. He found that he related easier to children than to adults in some way. Now, that's very disturbing to me that this guy was babysitting kids and stuff, but 
I mean, they said he kind of was like to the people around town was just kind of like old, oh, just shy. Just Ed. Yeah, yeah, just Ed's like just a quiet, like shy, kinda, quiet. He's type. a little weird, but you know, he's harmless. You so know. was Freddy Krueger. Yes. By the way. Very much so. And look what happened to that petter ass. Yeah, you're right. He's you're running right. around. One day he's running around sniffing kids' bicycle seats. <laughs> Next day he's getting burned at a stake. Yeah. I don't think they said he was he was a, a pedo. I well. I, I didn't think uh, that. I don't think uh, they were allowed. Yeah. I don't uh, think they said that. Okay. I, I just I, think I he likes killing I, children. I, I could. I could be associating. I could be putting A <laughs> equals B equals C when it does not, in fact, work that way. So, like Zap said. Originally in a Nightmare on Elm Street, he was supposed to be a pedophile. Yes, they, and they changed took it, it away. to murder because they said it was a little more. It was a little. It's too acceptable. It was too but weird in the, for the movie in the 2010 remake, he was a pedophile, Freddy. So I guess the original story did, did he turn out. into a priest? Uh, <laughs> that I do not know. <laughs> Again with the Catholics, <laughs> but the mother what? was dude, raped. Dude, <laughs> what's the matter with you? But the mother was a nun raped by like a hundred. Yes, raped by a hundred psychopaths. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you know. so there was a little twist to the Catholicism in the movie. With uh, they didn't say he was Catholic, but I guess a nun was Catholic. Yeah, I don't know. I Who's don't know. to say? Yeah, who is to say? Now, this isn't a maybe. Fi- that, maybe the mom was such a genteel person. They said she was such a nun. Yeah, that woman was a saint. Yes. <laughs> See, you don't say that. You don't say a nun. Yeah. Maybe it was. I don't know. I don't know. Now, this isn't, again, we're not talking about, uh, su- you know, significant fear of domesticated animals. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a guy that's going around touching kids. Right. Pedophile. Pedophile, got yeah. It, got it, got it. Yes. <laughs> not a pedophile. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. <laughs> Cha-ching. Just yeah. At one point, Henry began a relationship with a woman who was divorced with two children. He had plans on living with her. He worried about Ed's attachment to their mother. Henry often offended Ed by speaking poorly of her. Yeah, so this is the point where Henry kind of goes off on his own and he kind of realizes the bullshit and all the things that the mother's trying to, like, control them. And he's Very controlling. To, yeah, and at, by this time, I think these guys are, like, in their 30s and they're just now venturing That's right, yeah, out. because yeah. Uh, he was in his 40s. They were still living at home. Yeah, so, I mean, eventually this guy's like, yeah, I got to go out and, like, hook up or do something, you know what I mean? I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. <laughs> I mean, I just couldn't imagine, like, eventually you got those feelings. It's like, but this guy, Ed Gein, maybe it's, he doesn't have those feelings. I don't know. Well, yeah, Henry even said, like, I'm worried, like, you are you hang out with mom too much. Mm-hmm. In May of 1944, Henry went missing after a fire on the property. He was later found deceased. It was determined that he died of asphyxiation. It was later reported that Henry had bruises on his head, and some speculated that Ed killed his brother. Yeah, so that came later on. Initially, they ruled it like, you know, death from basically suffocating from the fire. But they did say that they noticed bruising on his head and stuff, but they said, oh, maybe it's from him falling. But then later on, when Ed was convicted of these crimes, they were like, well, maybe he killed his brother. I mean, oh, th- that's what I've read. I, I've yeah. read that that was considered his first kill because they had many that they didn't know about mm-hmm. or ones that they tried to relate to him. But mm-hmm. they said this was pretty much maybe his first kill. And back to the whole religion thing, they were saying like the Cain and Abel thing with the two brothers and you know this and that. So they were. I think that was also a Screwface song. Oh, was it? Yeah. No. No. I I thought there was a Cain and Abel, and I don't know. It was was a band back in the day. Well, he would know. I tried to look them up online. I couldn't find. Never heard of them. Never heard of them. Okay. Okay. I was looking for their greatest hits album. Could not find it. I couldn't. But I thought there was a Cain and Abel in one of the songs. Something Abel. Mm -hmm. I am Cain. I don't know. I don't know. I'm getting off off topic here. Yeah. Hop on the train. Gein and his mother were now alone in the house. (laughs) (laughs) Gein and his mother were now alone in the house. His mother suffered a stroke soon after Henry's death. She suffered another stroke and died on December 29th, 1945. So to her second stroke, the thing that, uh, do you guys know the story about the dog? No. Do tell. Yes. Okay. So... She had her first stroke right after the son Henry died in the fire. And back to that part, the fire company came out and the police and all that. And, uh, you know, Ed was like, hey, I haven't seen my brother. But he kind of like took him right to the body. And they were like, well, wait a minute, you know. Yeah, how, how, how does he, he know? You know, it's a 96 or not. I don't know if it's not. I'm thinking of Ray Myers Hollow. That's a huge property, probably over 100 acres. I forget what it was. This guy like led him right to the body. But anyway, the brother died. The mother had a stroke because it. You know, yeah, she was sad or upset or whatever. The other stroke happened shortly after her and Ed kind of like locked themselves in the house. They didn't really leave for much. She was kind of recovering from the stroke. 
but she decided he needed to go get, I think it was hay or something like that. So they had to go purchase hay from this guy. Last name was Smith, I remember. So they go to the Smith guy's house to buy hay. Sounds like you've been there. Like I've never been there. I'm, I, I, no, no, like the way that you're talking about this well, story. It sounds like you're like, stepping out of the story. Yeah, it's just pretty deep. picture me as like being there, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So they go there, and uh, this guy has a puppy there. He starts beating this puppy, like beating the shit out of this puppy to death. The puppy dies right there. Right in front of right, Ed. Right in front of Ed and the mother. That's not what upsets her. While he's beating the puppy, this lady comes running out of the house, and she's like, oh, what are you doing? Stop, stop, you know, this and that. And the mother was upset because she was living with this guy, and they're not married. And she was so upset oh. about that. She's like telling Ed after they were leaving, can you believe that harlot, that whore is living <laughs> with this guy? Didn't say a word about the dog. She was worried about that, like, you know, outside of wedlock, living what together and all back that. back alley, Sally. So, yeah. What's wrong with these women back yeah. in the 50s? Sinners. Sinners, yes. She, that set her over the edge. Mm. So just to give you a perspective on her, how religious and stuff, it was like, who doesn't love puppies? I mean, I guess some people don't, but you see a puppy beat, it would upset you. you see, know yeah, yeah it could warp a young child's mind. To right. That. Mm -hmm. so did she stroke out because it dude was living with this chick in it sin? It was shortly after that she died and she was so upset she over She couldn't it. take it. Yeah, that Ed said that kind of like pushed her over the edge. She just could not take people sinning and all the sin and everything going on. And she didn't really leave the house because she hated to see it and just how the world was, you know. So that pushed her over the edge, I guess. And then she had that stroke. Well, you, yeah, you don't, you don't really want to see people living in sin like that. Mm -mm. I just, I mean, it upsets me right now. I don't know if I can continue. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm sure. I can continue this story. Yeah. With his mother not around, he was spending time reading adventure stories about cannibalism and horrors of the Nazi era. There was a Nazi story in particular about a husband, and, I think they were a husband and wife duo that ran a concentration camp. And she would see, a, you know, somebody, I like that tattoo. Let's kill them. I'm going to get that. She'd skin the tattoo off, like take the tattoo oh, off okay. and like kind of make furniture out of it's it. It's like merit stuff. badges. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Or they like, were looking scouts. Yes. So but, people go to Grateful Dead shows. Mm hmm and they trade stickers, this, allegedly. Yeah. So I don't go. I can't stand that I don't music. like, like T-shirts I heard, too. But a, like a buddy yeah. of mine's brother goes to these things like it's his job. Mm -hmm. And he, he gets his own stickers printed each year, and he, you know, exchanges these stickers and shit like that. Wasn't really? that Circuit Jerry Garcia? Is that over now? I, like, I thought that was... They still go on. Yeah, okay, I it's know just that. the band that, was that the won't thing. fucking die. They won't, yeah, they won't go away. So with that, this makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. hey... You go to, you know, Boy Scout camp or something. Hey, I'm from Troop Whatever. Oh, I'm from Troop Whatever. We're going to exchange, Change you know, it. badges and stuff. Well, right. This chick just wanted to, whatever. Their skin. Nice yeah. tat. Yeah, I like the tattoo, and she was just wicked. Well, he loved reading these stories, and that was one in particular that uh, he loved reading about, and I think that's what, as we'll see what he ends up doing, he was drawing from all these. And they said in school, he was an okay student, but he loved to read. And when his mother died, that's all he did. He just delved into these books. We got in all this dark shit. Well, were you know were these I mean? like, where would you order these books to like be delivered I mean, to your house? Then, I mean, I, books about cannibalism and I mean, well, I, know I think it, it was more about, well, yeah, about the cannibalism, but like the, the Nazi atrocities and all that, that stuff, this is in the mid fifties. All that stuff was coming out about everything that happened. And there, I guess there were a lot of books and a lot of literature on it. Back then they had these places called libraries. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think they would carry in the fifties. They had books about cannibalism and Nazi era, Nazi stuff in the fifties. Everybody hated the Germans. Yes, they did. So that was something that people, yeah, I guess focused on or were like drawn to because everybody got their shit. You know what I mean? So if you're into like a story about Nazism and cannibalism, would you have to order that to get it delivered? Where are you, well, like, isn't that mail order like out of where? the back of boys life? Maybe something? it's possible. Right. It's right below the merit badges. No, but what I'm saying is there had to be some sort of you, you wouldn't go look at these in your local library. This isn't at. I got to believe you would. Maybe you're begging the question, how do they print these books so quickly? How did these books come out so fast after the war? Or so That's quickly what I'm thinking, so quickly war. after the war, which just ended in the like, late 40s, if you're talking in the mid... I guess not. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, because like, the cessationalism stories about what was going on at the time... Of course. Yes. So, you know, as a, when I was a kid, I was a Boy Scout and right. I'm, I'm, you know, of course, you know, you'd go to summer camps and you'd go to this, that, and the other camp, or there's things out there like Bible camp or whatever the hell camp, mm -hmm. fat camp. Are you an Eagle Scout? You name it. No. Okay. No. One of you'd be my, like a president or One something. of my life regrets. Okay. So. Understood. All of that aside, when I hear a husband and wife that run a, a, a concentration camp, it's like, <laughs> wow. It's like, uh, yeah. 
you know. Yeah, what's that mean? They were just, they loved what they, I mean, I guess it was just, they happened to find each other and they, I mean, I remember reading that part about it and they were like a couple. That's amazing. Yeah. And she was worse than him. She was worse than the guy. And she was like a big, actually, it's funny because Ed's mom was like a big German. She was built like that. Was she a large woman? Larger woman, just big, kind of like, and this Nazi. She was a handsome woman. Yeah. She looked like her dad. Right. Well, this German female kind of reminded him of, of his mother. So that was another part of it. So he was just infatuated with this couple and her particularly and what she was up to. But uh, yeah, just a ton of crazy shit. And then talking about the cannibalism and the shrunken heads and stories about all that. And that comes up later in the story. So, so those were, okay, I get it now. Those were more stories of like adventure that you would go mm-hmm. and read about. And you probably thought on the, islands. You yeah. probably thought it was like just all like made up fictional and all that but mm-hmm. in reality it was really happening and stuff like that but, some uh, interesting facts yeah bernice warden a hardware store owner went missing on november 16th 1957 her son the local sheriff discovered an open cash register and blood stains later that day the last receipt made was of antifreeze the sheriff knew that ed Gein had been in the store the previous night and was planning to return the morning to purchase the antifreeze yes yeah, so after his mother passed away and he was kind of on his own. He started to come out a little more. Well, that's what he lost his shit when his mother died. He well, was he fo- did. Yeah, he was 41. Right. So murder lesson number one, don't kill the sheriff's mother. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, that's not a good move. I, don't but, think, he, I think he tried. Like, and I for damn just, sure, don't bring ink and paper into the situation by ordering antifreeze yeah. the day before. <laughs> and leave a receipt. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not a good move. Yeah. But there again, this girl, this warden. Kind of reminded him of his mother. Kind of built the same, similar mm-hmm. look and all that. And this is always going to tie back. He had actually asked her out on a date. Hey, do you want to go to a movie? She was like in her 50s. at, uh, I think 58, they said at the time. Okay. He was like, hey, you want to go out to a movie? And he was, he was kind of like going out trying to ask these girls out and stuff like that. And he was kind of opening up a little bit, but mm-hmm. he was still weird and stuff. He was like, like, that. like mom said, get out there a little bit. You yeah. Know? But she was gone. Yeah. And now he was kind of on his own. But people just always ch- chalked it up to him being weird. They said he would come and stare at women. Dude, he's a ladies man. Yeah. I, mean, I hear they call him Sweet Dick Eddie. <laughs> that, I did hear <laughs> that earlier. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, he's got the hat, hat to the side. He's got style and look, stuff. The, the, the rumors are true. Yeah. But he was like trying to make his move. You know, with this girl. He's like, hey, let me take you out. Let me take you to a movie. So he was a smooth talker. Yeah. Sweet Eddie. Yeah. (laughs) Sweet Eddie. Yeah, sweet dick Eddie. Mm. I thought it was like crazy Eddie, but that's... No, he sold furniture. That's like a copyright. His prices are insane. Yeah. Apparently, so was the price of antifreeze if he's going to go back and kill the woman, for Christ's sake. Right, yeah. Yeah, what was that for a... Was that a gallon? Yeah, what what would you buy? Is that in like a glass jar? Yeah, I don't know that you go to a hardware store. I guess you would buy antifreeze there, but still, yeah. Gein was arrested at a grocery store, and his property was searched. Upon searching the property, authorities found Warden's decapitated body hanging upside down. She had been shot and mutilated after her death. In addition to the body, authorities made numerous horrifying discoveries, such as masks made of skin of females, chairs upholstered with human skin, and human skin wastebasket, human bones, a belt consisting of female nipples. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it gets worse. That's a cool belt. <laughs> yeah. A lampshade designed out of a human face, a sack containing Bernice Warden's head, and her heart was found in a bag in the kitchen. A shoebox full of vulvas, to name a few. Wow, that's wow, that was a long sentence. That uh that nipple belt is on back order currently. Yeah, on, you couldn't get it. On yeah, on I know. Mm. I checked on Hot Topic, but they ran out. I was gonna try to get one for, for a prop, but you can't get one anymore. But that first part about at the grocery store, there's conflicting reports on that. I also heard one that said it was at like a, at a somebody else's house. house. He was having dinner I, yeah, at somebody that, like at I a house. So I'm not sure which one. I'm thinking it's more. I think it was. I think it was probably the house where he was having dinner. There was this teenage kid that I guess he would hang out with. All I thought that was weird. He'd hang out with this teenage kid all the time. They go to the movies. They'd hang out. He'd come into the house, and uh, it was kind of like a weird relationship. But think about Ed. How he was mentally was almost like on a child's level. Because yes. his mother kind of infantized him and made him feel like he was a kid. You know what I mean? So he related to like these teenage. This kid was like 14 or 15. I yeah, think. he just froze. So his development just froze. Right. So there was a kid in my... A kid. Uh, there was this dude in my neighborhood growing Zoom. up. Other dudes. So <laughs> there, was, there was this dude in my neighborhood growing up 
you know, I'm not going to say the dude's name just to protect the innocent. He's since dead, and he's been dead a number of years. Died at an old age. Mm-hmm. But his mental development stopped at, call it, 10 to 12 years old. Oh, wow. So he just stopped right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could have been, it could have been like a, a cerebral palsy. It could have been, I, I don't know, what, what, whatever had afflicted this poor guy. But you would just see as the summers would go by every couple of years, uh, he would just have this new group of friends. And it was the new, or I should say he was hanging out with a different group of kids. Mm-hmm. And it's because the other ones grew up and moved on. Oh, good. And, I thought you said he was going to kill. He killed no, him. no, 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 no. <laughs> this is, this is just, just the simple, you know, just the most innocent, happiest yeah. dude, like ignorance is bliss. Right. right so right. happiest dude in the world rode his, you know, three wheeled tricycle, right. A large person's bicycle, I should mm-hmm. say, mm-hmm. but it had three wheels. So technically a tricycle, mm-hmm. uh, all around town, just do, 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 do. And he would hang out with these groups of kids. It, mm-hmm. be, to him, they were his peers. Right. Mentally, he was like on mm-hmm. there thinking like them. and Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. They're playing ball or, you know, kickball or whatever. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Again, the, all the, the, eventually they would grow up and he would find a new batch. Right. And it, it, it's, it's not that there was anything, you know, illicit or... Sexual with anything like that. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Right. This just was the innocence of his mind. So mm-hmm. it's interesting to hear what you would mention about good old ed good old <laughs> yeah it's crazy sweet, eddie. Sweet, 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 eddie. Eddie. sweet sweet eddie. Eddie. Uh, yeah. uh looking for uh looking for love in all the right places I mean, right. so you but know he wasn't looking for love he just he was just it was the love of friendship maybe yes no well he i think later in life here he was trying to replace his mother so this girl to him was like we'll the, we'll, why, we'll get to that yeah we'll get to yeah, that he was hanging out with some zoo right oh the zoos <laughs> <laughs> what is that reference i don't know. i don't even what this, this guy? This, <clears throat> this one here is having a flashback. Good time here. No, that was uh, uh, from when we were younger. Was, you yeah, see, uh, look at that. Ju- just in <laughs> just so just in high school. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, you guys, you guys are missing. <laughs> <laughs> this guy made chairs upholstered with human skin. Well, yeah. I mean, that's. I, I mean, the guy was. But where do you think he got that idea? I don't know. From that Nazi shit, you know what I mean? Uh, from that. Oh, yeah, from that's yeah, what let's I was cut saying. From the, the, okay. tat, the lady right. that fancy tat tattoos. Lady. Quest- the, the happy camper. The, the camp owner. Question for you. Do you think if Ed Gein was around now, he would do like a whole thing? Yeah, a like whole Gein collection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's yeah, I can see that. Seasonal. Like on the commercial. Seasonal. You know what I mean? Well, uh, it has to be at, summertime. So at the pit, well, no, given that, let's pretend, so that, not even pretend. So we're looking no, at, the, not at we're, all. we're looking at dude's picture. Right. So right now, this is the, you know, winter line, the fall and winter line. Right. Uh, With the hat. Yeah. I'm yeah. guessing, I'm guessing the summer line consisted of, Probably the same hat, but just a wife beater shirt. Right. Uh, maybe some cut off jorts. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stained wife beater. For had sure. To have like, yeah. But the whole the fern- yellow as hell. With oh. um, with the with the sh- yeah. But the- even the furniture side, I'm saying. Oh yeah, you know, like that the would be yeah the game collection. Oh, yeah. I see. What, I thought we were talking fashion. No, no, no. no, no we're, talking we're, we're talking. You know, they have like, like the lampshade. Like, you, know yeah. you know, they have like Nate Burkus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pictures of that lampshade. Mm-hmm exist on the inner tubes i it, couldn't it, find it oh it's out there i gotta look for it i it, saw the chair which you really couldn't tell i mean it's is it black and white so you yeah can't, yeah and i saw a lot of like the heads in jars or what, not in like he would have what, them in boxes of some what sort. i remember reading is that they said which obviously they didn't but they said that they took pictures of everything and then destroyed everything but who knows well, no, the house burned down no no but, but i'm talking removed, about the evidence yeah, like the pictures yeah. and stuff but you know they probably didn't destroy it mm-hmm. probably not you know? just like they destroyed the alien ship they found when that thing landed yeah nope i don't believe that for a second no i think I, that's yeah. in mar-a-lago right now mm. with some of the other top secret information so interestingly <laughs> enough <laughs> there he is <laughs> interestingly <laughs> enough can we circle back to one of the items you'd mentioned a shoebox full of vulvas yes yes so not just one but a shoebox full yeah, of vulvas. Yeah. so as mm-hmm. i read it i read it, it there were two Outside of the shoebox that they found, mm-hmm. but absent those two, or I should say, in addition to those two, they found a shoebox with nine vulva. So that's eleven vulva. So let's, let's assume that you know CNN reporting mm-hmm. you know, the the report is accurate, right? Nine vulva. What does a vulva look like when it's not attached to a body? Right? Like yeah, I, I'm thinking of to... like a like like a skin bagel. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, but I heard he spray painted them silver. Yes, and, I heard that and, also. And put bows on them. 
That was like something that I he was going to use them for Christmas. I gifts. was going to say Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Like decorate. I mean, I heard all kinds. I heard he had taken the, the, the window shade drawstring. He made out of lips. So like they went to pull the shades down and mm-hmm. had a pair of lips on the end of the drawstring. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Well, here's one other thing I heard. No, so, that game. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I said Jesus. He said no. no <laughs> I heard that he had skull bowls, you know, yes. out of skulls for like soup and stuff like that. Yeah, and I, and like, I, yeah, and I did hear that he had, like guests over and he would serve them. Mm-hmm. Out, and, yeah, and who knows that? And I heard uh, also skulls on the bedpost and stuff of his uh, bed, but. I don't know. Maybe he was just designing before his time. That's what I said. I could see like that being a whole line. Of like not even in like a, he wasn't even like a cool gothy way about it. He was no. just like you know this is this is what I I enjoy. This and, is out here for my people. And much like we are right now, uh, people back then dealt with all this in a humorous way. And actually, mm-hmm. there was a psycho- psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever they are. I don't know. One one's with medicine. One was out. Is that how it goes with those two? I guess psychiatrist, psychologist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm no scientist. I no, couldn't me tell you. Yeah, yeah. So oh, anyway, like one, one will talk to you. One will give you drugs. Exactly. Like, yes, something okay. like that. No, well, I think one one speaks with you, and the other one studies. One, uh, I got yeah. you. I got one you. can make you nervous, and one can make you small. Okay. Well, one of those two, I guess, did a study there locally. <laughs> <laughs> it's a song lyric. No. Oh, I didn't catch that. One, one pill will make you nervous. Oh, one white pill. rabbit. I yes. got you. Jeez, like what you did there. Took so, me a while to pick that one up. So they were saying, like, back then they would, they, they came up with the term geeners, where they would have these jokes. Like, why did Ed Gein? Whatever. Like one geeners? Yeah, like one ge- like one yeah. liners, but they yeah. were geen jokes. They called mm. them geeners. And he said that basically that was people's way of kind of coping with. How many geeners does it take to screw in a light bulb? Right, 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 right. Right, that type of stuff. Some oh, geener yeah. walks into a bar yeah. <laughs> with a six foot salami in one arm, yeah. Yeah, a poodle under the other, or however that goes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they dealt with, they use humor to kind of deal with everything. They found parts of Mary Hogan, a woman who went missing from a tavern she owned in 1954. Her skull was in a box and her face, which had been made into a mask, was found in a bag. Did you guys actually, did you watch the Ed Gein movie? It's like a B. I tried watching it. It was terrible. Kane Hodder. Yeah, from, it's terrible. You know who Kane Hodder was? before no. He was uh, Jason. Uh, Jason Voorhees. In the, was he the, the deputy? Kane Hodder played Ed Gein. Oh, okay. And if you're talking about the movie, yeah, he's extreme, very tall. He's yeah. a tall dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was Jason, like the the bigger, bulkier Jason, but and all, like the Friday Thirteenth movie. From from he the was movie, swole. He, yeah, was swole, he was swole. definitely. From the movie, from the story, he like went in there and just started making out with her, and then he kind of like lost in it, and he said he choked her out. Yeah, I only got through about ten minutes of that movie, and I was like, ah, this is not what I thought it was going to be. They may or may not have taken some artistic liberties. Yes, yeah. But there there was witnesses to that that said that he was the last seen with her. And that's where a lot of like uh Are you talking about with Mary? Yeah. Mary Hogan. Well, yeah. no, they found did they find they found her body parts there, right? No. I don't believe so. Yeah, they mask was found in a the bag. They found her face. Yes, yes, but when he he took her when he killed her. Mm-hmm. She was the one from the bar. She was like a bigger woman, jolly. Yeah, she owned. She was a tavern yeah. owner. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh Well, one question about that. Okay. Well, go ahead and keep reading. I want to ask you something after we get into Okay. Yeah. After this next paragraph. Once in custody, Gein admitted to murdering both women. He also admitted that he had dug up bodies of women from local cemeteries to use the body parts as trophies and their skin to produce a skin suit he would crawl into and become his dead mother. When asked if he performed necrophilia with any of these bodies, he said, they smelled too bad. Okay. So my question is, Ed Gein was a very slight build, not a big guy at all. Okay. If he was acting alone, and I'm just throwing this out there, I, like, how was he able to move these bodies? Could you, Matt, like, do you ever, I mean, not that any of us, I hope not, <laughs> try and move, like, a dead weight, like, Call a body? Tuesday but night. But let's say, like, a friend of ours is passed out at a party or something, and you're trying to move them, you know, like, yeah. you ever try to move somebody when they're totally out, like, like the weight of a body? You're talking an entire body. Right. It's, Consider, however, in this instance, mm-hmm. this is crazy-ass Eddie here, so yeah, he's, he has he's taking of, parts. Yes. Right. It, but it, well, now... To Matt's credit, yeah, he may have some kind of, you know, despite his slight build, mm-hmm. farm boy, mm-hmm. corn fed, like you said about Wisconsin seven years old. Yeah, throwing, dude, throwing yeah. hay bales, like Correct. this kid is mm-hmm. a strong dude. So as a as a great for example, so a buddy of mine buys wood from the Amish, mm-hmm. and when he goes to these farms or the, not farms, these these, these mills, mm-hmm. 
these dudes, and I mean from a young age, they've got forearms like that Popeye. put Popeye to shame. Right. Th- their, their forearms are as, as big as my thigh. Mm-hmm. It, huge, tremendous, incredible strength these guys have. So who's to say? Do you think what, he could move a What old Eddie like was packing there? No, right. but he's he's not right in the head. For him to be, he's like digging this grave up, opens it up, grabs his body. I'm sure he can just throw it over his shoulder, throw it into his truck, no problem. Yeah, I guess. Because he, he's motivated his, by more than just. If you're in the zone. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, he's or, like in the zone. It's like an incredible athlete. Yeah. That was like his zone. Or with the body of the hardware store owner. He, stra- he tied it up, you know. In the in the shed or whatever. But that's what they would do with the deer. That they would do that. Right. Think I'm about not. It. I'm not a hunter, so I don't know like how easy it is to. But I, that's the way he like strung it I up. I guess if you're using pulley systems, yeah, and ropes, and, and you stuff, have ropes over top to pull it up. I just thought about like if he could have had a, an accomplice or somebody that was in this that was kind of working with him. I well, mean, the, not. I mean, who knows? And and from what I've read, there was a person that was with him that he give money to that helped him dig up graves, but the guy didn't know what he was exactly doing with the mm-hmm. bodies. Right. Like, he just thought he was stealing stuff from him, like taking money or jewelry, things like that. I guess jewelry, there wouldn't be any money. I was going to say, what? a dead body. Wait a sec. Well, uh, <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah, let me, let, me, let me bounce back on that one. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jorge, uh, can you help me uh, dig up this grave? Uh, for what? Oh, Some money. It's none of your goddamn business. Just right. look, I'll, I'll give you five bucks and help me dig this thing up. Right. Who's going to say sure? Right. I mean, look, at the same time, look, $5 is $5. $5 dollars right. is $5. Right. But, and especially that, in 55, if somebody gave somebody even 3 bucks in some, like, deer meat, you know what I'm saying? Right. And the guy's like, I just need you to help me dig this up. Yeah. And the guy's like, what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm taking jewelry off him. Here, here's some jewelry from this dead body I dug. Well, up. conversely, he for damn sure didn't convince him that he's a scientist. Mm-hmm. Hey, no. I need this for the university. Right. He's like, no I'm, I'm, I'm going to make some furniture. The guy was like, uh-oh. Okay. Well, I was even wondering about that teenager that he hung out with. Like somebody like that is young and impressionable. Like soft in the guy. head. Because I think they did say that he had shown that kid the shrunken heads and was basically, hey, they're from, uh, yeah, my uh, my cousin sent them. They're from Brazil or not Brazil. I forget <laughs> what country. Some country. Some, you know. Oh, they, heads they're, there. You they're, can they're buy legit. Yeah. They're, they're legit, but they got sent over here. They're not. Like he had showed this kid some stuff. But you know, who's to say this kid wouldn't have been involved? My thing was, I wonder if there's any outside possibility that he had helped. I don't know. Maybe it's possible, and yeah. so many things tie into this. Now, think about this: this we're, we're talking about the potential for somebody helping Crazy Eddie mm-hmm. digging some stuff out of the ground. So, this guy's got to be broke as a joke to take a couple of bucks to help somebody dig up some dead bodies. Right. right. Like, I mean, I'll do a lot of things, you know, if push comes to shove and, you know, right. they're going to turn the lights out or take my house. Sure. Right. There are some things I would do, but I don't know if I go digging up bodies. Right. It's interesting though, that Ed is, you know, his fascination with the skin and the, whatever and he was raised, he was at least taught the trade of tanning. Yeah. The art of tanning. So mm-hmm. as this all ties together way back in the day, way back, we're talking hundreds of years ago, they used to tan leather with urine. Oh, yeah. And so if... You think Eddie was golden showering? No. Well, so with that, the term is uh, you can only get anyone... Per- there's a lot of skin. If you want to make a you know living selling tanned leather, you, you need a lot of piss. Right. So the people, the, the very poor people, knew that there was an opportunity to make something just right off of their own excrement. So they were in turn piss poor. Ah, that's where that term came from. To take that a step further... How are you going to transport piss to the to the tanner? Well, you need some kind of container, some kind of vessel. Mm-hmm. If you were so broke, you may not have had a pot to, to piss, piss in. in. Oh, mm. interesting. Fun fact. Good lesson. Thank you. It's mm. cool where terms come from. Like, I would have never known that. Mm. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what this guy was piss poor. Like I said, came over and said, what do you need me to do, Eddie? Not right. a pot to yeah, piss yeah, in. For yeah. sure. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, I just wondered about that. Just because of the logistics of it all, bodies, but if anybody, if anybody bodies, did, you know? if anybody did help them, and there, would they say anything ever? No, I mean you'd be like, I don't yeah, know, yeah, like, like, whatever, nothing like, to do I, with it. Yeah, but there also was another story that he had this property, tons and tons of acres, and people locally kind of knew this this guy was off because he would make comments about when that bar tavern uh, owner went missing. He had made comments like, "Oh, she's up at my house." And people were like, "Oh yeah, Ed, whatever." So he was kind of throwing it out there that she was. But she really he was. He was like truth line everybody. Right, right. Basically telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, telling the truth. And, and, and they were like, shut up, Much Ed. like our movie we were talking about, American Psycho. He's trying to tell people, what yeah. are you into? Mur- murders and executions. Oh, mergers and acquisitions. You know, they hear what they want to hear. And they just kind of think, there's no way this guy, you know. 
and much like our boy Ed Gein, people didn't really think he could, he was capable. But anyway. Gein was arraigned on one count of murder in November 1957. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia and was committed to a hospital for the criminally insane. He was found incompetent and not fit for a trial. Now, that's an easy call. No doubt. So, so much of this smacks of, so, I mean, so far, everything right now, all right. Of the four flicks that were mentioned earlier in mm-hmm. foreshadowing, shadowing, right. uh, the first one, Psycho. Psycho. Mm-hmm. So, this is Norman Bates all day. Mm-hmm. All day. Come on, man. The, talking mother obsession. What did you hear about his mother's room? Like he left it untouched and pristine and it had a rocking chair right as you looked in. And that's where they got the rocking chair for Norman Bates. He closed off rooms of the house, like Mm -hmm. of of a house of size X. He only lived in, you know, X minus Y, right? Right. Just a really small, small small spot. He kept everything else pristine for her. Mm -hmm. Psycho, a great uh, Alfred Hitchcock classic. Oh, it's great, yeah. Which would have never seen the light of day unless for this person. That's right. And we would have never had Peroni's disease without Hitchcock. (laughs) <laughs> right <laughs> yeah the carrot dick yeah they, Peronis. Yeah. they have like pills for that and everything now i guess or surgery i don't know i don't know i saw a commercial for it on like tnt yeah i read about it in a book about it yes in the aftermath of the arrest and arraignment gein's possessions were scheduled to be auctioned off march 30th 1958 on march 20th the farmhouse was destroyed by a mysterious fire Some believe that rumors of its becoming an attraction for tourists caused the nearby people to panic and destroy the house of horrors. Gein's sedan that he used to transport the bodies from the graveyard to his house was auctioned off for $760 to Bunny Gibbons. Wasn't he the guitarist for... uh, (laughs) Bunny Gibbons, yeah. (laughs) He was the guitarist for... um, And remains the guitarist for ZZ ZZ Top. Top. Is that his name? Yes. Oh. A sideshow carnival operator. Use the car as an attraction at its carnival, charging 25 cents for a look at the sedan. For clarity, it's Billy, Billy Gibbons. Gibbons. Billy Gibbons. Yes. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. We, we like to tell people things, and they'll go around. I, yeah. People be like, hey, Bunny Gibbons, dude. He yeah. plays for oh, ZZ Top. I thought that was that he got legs. She not, or that was she got legs. I thought I mean, <laughs> <laughs> She got legs. <laughs> See, that's perfect. Yeah. Knows yeah. how to <laughs> use them. Yeah. I would argue that with a skin suit made out of his mother, he was a sharp dressed man. <laughs> yeah, right. Excellent. <laughs> Ching. But anyway, yeah, back to the story. That was um that was odd. But why like the seven hundred they also have like um Ted Bundy's car. Yeah, the, the Volkswagen. The Volkswagen. That was also something that was auctioned off and it finally got into a museum somewhere, but somebody yeah. actually wanted that. It's funny in the fifties that they would even have that foresight to know that this could possibly be a problem down the road, that there's people out there that would be like you know what I mean? Like, I don't know that there was, was there that interest in serial killer? Like, I don't know. What yeah, I'm trying it's to a say, fasc- well, like, how did they know that that was going to be, which it would have been. Absolutely. As we been. spoke about earlier, this was prior to the age of desensitization. Yeah. So you know, there weren't the internets mm. back then that you saw a murder every day, or you saw right. some serial killer once a week, or you saw a school shooting once a month or whatever. I mean, mm. this didn't happen. So right. for damn sure, once word of that spreads, mm-hmm. meh. People are going to want to come see it. People are going to want to come see it. Oh, let's go to the freak show that is, you know, lacrosse, Plainfield, or Plainfield, Wisconsin. Yes. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I guess they just knew, like, people are going to. in in 2022, if you had some of that stuff found at Ed Gein's house, Mm -hmm. if you had that nipple belt right now, I bet it'd go for a couple mil. Mm. I don't know about that much, but it'd be be a lot of money. I wish I had that nipple belt. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we'd go for or, something. Or something from his house, like a violin or anything that they found in there. Trash would go for money. People would pay for that. Oh, just to say, I have Ed Gein's something right. in their house. Yeah, how I mean, many nipples does it take to make a belt? Quite a few. I, I mean, guess, guess it depends on how fat you are. Yeah, if you're a 34. If he's like a 32, 34. It yeah. wouldn't be too bad. I, I don't know. I'm guessing, you know, if a nipple... Gein, Gein looks it, more the yeah. size depends of, on the size of the, the standard size of nipple. the nipple. Yeah. So the average just size of the nipple, inch, inch and a half. So you're looking at you know twenty to thirty four nipples. Yeah, depending. I mean, it's a lot. Is that how he measured his belts? It's a thirty four nippler. Yeah, <laughs> he might have. <laughs> oh, I just got back from the all you can eat buffet, man. I gotta take out a couple of nipples here. <laughs> we had like unlimited supply though, from just, the graveyard. Yeah, the graveyard. Back to that too, the graveyard. So we didn't really talk about that, but he would keep an eye on the obituaries when he'd see like a middle fresh fresh kills and they'd have to be like middle-aged woman around like his mother's age and that's what he would go for like fresh bodies that were close to that age and female would they have to be like a little plump 
Was he into like no, the bigger I think women? He would, just, he would know a lot of the ladies. He would know because the town's small. I was going back to like the Silence of the Lambs with mm. Buffalo Bill. Yeah, so that yeah, that was a yes, very good, good, very good comeback, or I should say, flashback, mm-hmm. one hour photo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> flashback, <laughs> one hour photo. Yeah. You get your pictures in a flash. <laughs> Is that a commercial? I don't remember that, that was one. A commercial. Oh, okay, mm. you guys don't remember that? I just said it. Yeah. Certainly, I remember it. So, yeah. with, uh, yeah. so with the James Way Plaza, maybe. So as it, <laughs> with the so with the four movies mentioned. So of now, we're, let's <clears throat> pretend we're talking about and actually talk about Silence of the Lambs. So mm-hmm. here it is. As you as you hear this again, this now here's a, so the first iteration. Call it you know Norman Bates, right? Iteration a different one. 1974 Texas Chainsaw, right? Well, no, this Silence of the Lambs. Oh, okay, so Silence now Lamb. let's let's get on to. American Psycho? No, the guy. What's his name from the... Um, Billy Bob Thornton. Oh, Norman Bates? The guy from Science of the Lambs. Ted Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter. Oh, Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter, okay. Uh, nope, you were right with Buffalo Bill. Yes. Buffalo Bill's the guy that is... Well, he needs people that are, you know, this girthy, or he like he mm-hmm. likes the huskier... The huskier mm-hmm. women. More skin. Yep, mm-hmm. more skin, more stretch. But you fuck me. Yeah, I'd, you know, more I get that, elastic. Yeah. Oh, man, there's a... That song is, I want to say the name. It's What About Horses, right? What About Horses. No, it's called Wild Horses. That's Wild Horses. I think Screwface covered that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was on the B-side. Goodbye Horses. It was Goodbye Horses. Goodbye Horses. Goodbye Horses. horses. Yeah, but anyway, this Mm -hmm. dude was in, like, he made skin suits. Mm -hmm. What he was trying to do, he was trying to accomplish. Right. So, one other thing on that. So, this is another thing I read. Local people said that they, there were rumors that they would see a ghost there. Now, the property was six miles out of town. His closest neighbor was like a third of a mile away. So it wasn't really like there were neighbors, but people said that they would see a woman sometimes dancing under the moonlight on the uh, Gein property. Well, guess what? That Ed, was sweet Eddie. It was Ed. He uh, admitted to the police that he had built a skin suit. So he had like a skin vest. This with was like, like a corset, a corset and like the leggings. leggings. And he had yeah. skin gloves and he mm-hmm. would put this on and a female, one of those masks, and he would go dance around outside and like walk around the property at night. And he was just trying to become his mother. Actually, he was interested in doing like a, what do you call that? When you switch like a tranny, like a trans- drag, actually, drag. Like, yeah. He had interest in having the surgery. There was a, somebody like over in Sweden or another country that had had the surgery in done. In 1954. Yes. <laughs> well, he read about it in those Nazi atrocities. Nazi, yes, yes. Right. yes. No, but no, th- honestly, though, they said that he did, there was like a surgery that was completed. It was like somebody that was in, I forget if it was Sweden or Denmark or one of them. I don't know. But anyway, had a, a surgery done and he was interested in having it done. And he was actually thinking about doing it on himself. He was going to cut his own shit off and kind of do the, but he would take these vulvas that we talked about. Volvos. <laughs> yeah. Your Volvo. wife has a Volvo. Yeah. And put them over his, you know, his yeah. junk. And I'd like to come. take this opportunity to, to thank the fine folks at Volvo. Yeah. At Volvo. <laughs> so Volvo. they invented the three-point harness uh, so, uh, the seat seat belt. Belt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they invented it, and after having invented it. Gave it for free, right? Gave it away. Yes. So, no, we're not going to copyright this. We care no. about safety. Mm-hmm. Also, we want people to buy our vehicles. Right. So we're just going to give this out to all the automobiles. All the technology. Thank you, yeah. Volvo. Yeah. yeah. That was very unselfish of them. Just kind of like, yeah. yeah. He was but, unselfish uh, with Volvos. Just <laughs> no, he was quite the contrary. He kept all the Volvos. No, all he, he wanted he was, was the Volvos. He was gathering. Right. He was, was a hunter and gatherer. Mm. And did we talk about earlier the spray paint? Yes, and you said uh, silver, silver, silver Volvos. Yeah, whether or not silver and gold have I none. Yeah, <clears throat> a very sick individual, though. I mean, he had honestly. some mommy issues. Yes, but uh, what do we got? One more paragraph there, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll hit that up. In 1968, he was finally put to trial for murder. There were no jury, and the judge found him guilty of murder. A second trial was held on his sanity. He was found not guilty by reason of insanity and was sentenced to life in an institution for the criminally insane. Ed Gein died on July 26, 1984, at the age of 77 from respiratory failure. He had lung cancer at the time of his death. See, I heard he died from cancer, but I guess yeah, it was a long, it was complications from. Right. I mean, he had lung cancer at the time he died. Is he a smoker or anything? Or mm, not that I know of, mm. but um, could be uh, fumes from the fire that mm. wink wink killed his brother. Could have been, could have been. I know he was up for actually because he was in like a mental institution. He was up for uh, what do you call it? Release parole a couple, parole a couple times. And uh, murder you know, they, was the case that they gave him, right? <laughs> exactly, but they actually you know obviously denied him because he you know. 
Well, they, he, he still wasn't able to function. But, but they properly. said he was a model prisoner. Like he was like great. I read that too. He, yeah, he yeah, listened he to everything like, they said. Yeah, didn't do but he weird. had that structure that you know he always yearned for. Is somebody telling him what to do? Get up, do this, do that. And at some point, I guess when he was like sixty eight, he was like, "Hey, I want out." Like, I want to go visit places. I want to go to a big city and this and that. And they're like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Well, at the same time, you're not going to find a parole board that hasn't already been tainted with mm. having seen Psycho. Right. Like, hey, dude, I saw that movie about you. No, you're yeah. not getting parole. It's not going to happen. Right. Yeah. Well, like we were saying earlier, there was Psycho. Norman Bates was based on this character or based on this actual person. Mm -hmm. There was Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw. And there was uh, Buffalo Bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And the last one, so Zap. Brought, yeah, you went Zap American Psycho. This is one of Zap's favorite movies. Actually, one of my favorite movies, and I did not I'm know this there. until recently. But I'm going to blow Zap's mind right now. Maybe, maybe he knows this. Maybe he doesn't. Go ahead. So, in our phone call the other day, Zap brought up a quote from American Psycho, where our boy Christian Bale quotes Ed Ed uh, Gein and says, "When I see a girl walking down the street, I have two thoughts. One is basically I'd like to have sex with her, or whatever, something along those lines. And the other one is I like to see her head on a stick." That was actually from Edmund Kemper. That's correct. Yeah. So you did know that. I did know that. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah. So they did that in that movie and accredited to Ed Gein. But that mm -hmm. whole movie is about like having your thoughts confused and being all over the place and stuff. So I thought that was like. So more know, about Kemper than. It was actually an Edmund Kemper quote. quote. Not an Ed, Ed Gein quote. But Christian Bale's character mm -hmm. said an Ed Gein quote. He said, Ed Gein said. Yes. Right. Right. So, so he was, was quoted, but that the whole thing of that movie, if you go back and watch America, not we're getting off topic with American Psycho, but we're going to do that movie. Mm. With Zap. Mm. Count mm. me in. Yes. But what Zap was saying with that movie, and Zap will know this, that whole movie is about like being confused and being psychotic. Yeah. Saying one thing here and another, or whatever, yes. all that stuff, you know. But even at the end of that movie, did any of the stuff that he thought he committed, was it really committed? No. But my favorite part, American Psycho, mm -hmm. and we'll get into that one, but is the business card. He goes in that guy's, yeah. he goes in that guy's apartment. <laughs> yeah. It's bone. Yeah. The guy's dead and all that. He's worried about, like, this guy's got a better apartment than me. Yeah. I can't believe, you know. It's a great movie. He's like, he lives on the 40s, or the penthouse floor. Yeah. I'm only on the 36th. When Something Zap, like that. When Zap brought that point. movie up, I'm like, he's on my level because that's one of my all-time favorites. So I can't wait to do that. But yes, Ed Gein, that quote. Maybe people don't know that, but I'm glad Zap. I'm impressed that he knew that. I thought maybe I'd blow his mind, but uh, and I'm sure that I misspoke. You know, during that during that conversation, no, we were just talking about it, and you said I don't think you said. So for didn't sure, you blow you his just, mind this time? Didn't you? Mm. <laughs> Is that a? It's a lyric, right? That's a lyric. See, Indeed, know that that quote from the movie mm -hmm. when the character Christian Bale played said, comma quotation something about an Ed Gein quote. Mm -hmm. Dot, 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 ellipse, end quotation. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was the reminder at that time of Ed Gein. Ed Gein. Mm. It wasn't until later that I had found out. When the internet. Thanks to them internets. <laughs> it is not an Ed Gein quote. And are you aware of Edmund Kemper and all that? As Only by virtue of that's the guy who's quoting. Right now. <laughs> but do you know about Edmund Kemper? No. That's going to be another episode. Should we wait for <laughs> that this one? Guy, this guy is, you think Ed Gein's bad? This guy might be worse. Well, he was just driven by... Like, nothing bothered his him. His is though. more sexual. Yeah. Ed Gein, like I said, died a virgin. Dude, he missed his mom. Yeah. It, it, it all starts with that. It, mm -hmm. he, dude just missed his mom. He wanted his mom back. He was his only friend. Right. Like, it's sad. It's no, a it sad is. story. It is. So this woman had isolated this dude his entire life. Mm -hmm. Like, stay away from those whores. You're not allowed to have friends. You're only, you know, stay at home. That's all you're going to do. Like, mm -hmm. she completely isolated him. And so all he's going to get is friendship from his mother. I should say not even friendship, but camaraderie. camaraderie or, companionship. Or, 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 companionship. Companionship. Thank yeah. you. That's the word I was like. But I think that's where he found mother. those dead bodies is something like they couldn't talk to him. They couldn't talk back, but it was another physical form that reminded him of, of his mother, of his mother. Right. And that's why he would get. And that's the thing. If you go to these cemeteries, they couldn't re like he couldn't, he didn't talk to people. He wasn't allowed to have friends. Mm -hmm. This was kind of a way that he had a friend. And you think about it, he didn't really develop, like we talked about developing and all that. And he, like, once his mother was gone, what's the next thing that he got into was all those true crimes and all mm -hmm. that. So, and they also said he maybe had schizophrenia. So maybe when he was reading those articles and all that, he couldn't really tell what's real, what's not. And he was like doing these things and didn't know if it was real or not. I, I don't know. But, but to have all that, like the dead stuff in your house, like that shit ain't right, man. <laughs> like I wouldn't be able to go to sleep. It's this crazy. guy was just like, yeah, let me. We pull these shades down. Mm. Those are some cute lips. 
I, I just Where's my imagine. vulva box? I can't imagine. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's a, that's why I think people are interested in this because if you're a normal level-headed person and you think like that, like how would you ever be turned on by that or be like well, That's the only reason our podcast exists because right. people enjoy hearing about how these people were like that and we really don't know. We have no clue. This guy is not unlike the physical and dare I say, you know, psychological effects that uh, happen to male dogs. Mm-hmm. If you Snip, cut, cut snip, snip the nuts off too young, mm-hmm. or I should say too early in their in their development, that they they freeze. They're not not freeze. Their 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 growth psychological it stunts. Like yeah, it, it just stunts, stops right okay. there, and they mm-hmm. just uh, look, uh, again. I'm no scientist. I don't even have a goddamn dog. Although I would love a dog. That's yeah. what she did to Crazy Eddie. But mommy that, did that. Notwithstanding, that's what'll happen. Like it just stunts the growth if you cut them off too early. Right. It just, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, this his mother had his nuts in her from, purse from yeah. day one. <laughs> from an early age. Yeah, absolutely. And then when the brother tried to get away, he ended up dead. Yeah. So he wasn't even even able to develop like into the monster that he could have become. You don't right. Know. But who ended up killing him? Was it Ed or was it his mom? Yeah, well, the mom. No, well, was she already dead at the time? No, the mom wasn't. The mom she wasn't had, dead. She had, uh, no, because she had the stroke then after, the first stroke after that's that. It, that's and then right, the that's second right. stroke was after the dog, stroke. dog beating and all stroke. that. Stroke. Right. Billy but I, I, I think I think after all this came out, people started looking back like, well, maybe Ed killed his brother. You know, that because the brother was challenging him in the whole relationship. Like, mom's not as great as you think, blah, blah, blah. So, but at any rate, this guy influenced they so They should have just things. challenged each other to like a spelling contest. I'm sure right. that would have been intense it might have been i don't know but uh, ed gein definitely a sick dude troubled guy he lived a long life he had a lot of fans i mean he had yeah. fans uh, i mean he's in pop culture and move like we talked about the movies and music there's a band i think called ed gein or a song i forget i don't know i looked something up a band <laughs> yeah, i think there is people actually kept stealing his gravestone uh some heard that steal the gravestone and they were doing on ebay they were taking like uh carbon copies of it and selling it on ebay people were infatuated with serial killers and all that and he was one of the originals i shouldn't say well one of them i guess like jack the ripper they would say it'd probably be like one of the first but for what he did at the time it was just say he was an og one of the ogs yeah that's why i had uh, the the tilty hat but that was a sick story and we'll have to do ed kemper like i said i think that'll be a cool one if people enjoy this one give us some feedback yes i'm an american psycho and ed Mm -hmm. kemper you guys got anything else in closing or no, I just enjoyed uh, enjoyed talking about the story with you guys. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a uh, interesting. It's it's a very hard read, but once mm-hmm. you get into the story, you realize that it really wasn't his fault. I don't think. I just think it was the way he was raised. Yeah, dude just missed his mom, man. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, all yeah, he, he, he just missed his down mom. To. Yeah. yeah, he had his bestie. He missed. He missed his bestie. Did he have a mom tattoo? Do we know that? Yeah, we'll on a big battle. I think it was on the lamp, <laughs> on, the lamp. <laughs> on of his lamp. Moms, right <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. But uh, nah. Anyway, thanks for tuning in again to the Old Dirty Basement. Don't forget to find us on Facebook, Instagram at Old Dirty Basement, and then on TikTok, which we don't do much on there. But that's Old Dirty Basement podcast. Leave us a five star rating. We Please. appreciate that on Spotify, Apple, Google, however you're listening. Uh, let us know what you think of Zap. I think you did great. We want to have Zap back here more. Yes, we appreciate often, you, sure. Zap. Thank he's you. A good oh, no, I, fellas, I appreciate you. Thank you no, so much for dude, having he's me. He's a on. natural, man. I think he fits in down here. So we look forward to having him back many more times, and we'll catch you where? On the flip side. Later. Peace. Thanks for hanging out in the old dirty basement. If you dig our theme music as much as we do, check out Tsunami Experiment. Available on Apple, Spotify, or wherever great music lives. We can be found at Old Dirty Basement on Instagram, Facebook, and at Old Dirty Basement Podcast on TikTok. Please don't forget to hit that five-star rating wherever you're listening. Until next time, where it's never too deep in the shallow end.